Welcome to Pure Math 030. This is going to be a lesson on, well, just general translation questions. These are exam type questions, lots of questions in the workbook like this. But, and it's working with what we just covered on horizontal and vertical translations. And these are really common on exams. They're also, as I said, in the workbook. And you can draw right in there where you're given a function, like in this case y equal f of x. Now we don't know what this is. There's no equation attached to it, so um, you can't do it algebraically. But what you'll be asked to do is to sketch um, gr transformed graphs based on this graph. So for example, y minus 3 is equal to f at x plus 4. Well, um, you want to identify first off with this the nature of the translations. So I'm bringing up a, a graph of this. You need to note that this has been moved four units over to the left. And that is based on this right there, x plus 4, 4 to the left. And then also it's been moved three units up. And that would be based on this y minus 3. Now if that's not clear by inspection of that, then you need to isolate the y. And that, in fact, is what most people do. They'll take the f at x plus 4. And remember, the sign for your horizontal translation will be reversed. So x plus 4 means 4 to the left. And then the 3 comes over. So plus 3 tells us 3 in the positive. So I repeat, when the y is isolated, the horizontal translations are opposite. The vertical translations are correct. So if it's plus 3 then it goes up 3. However, I would encourage you to try to identify that at the earlier stage, where y minus 3 and x plus 4, before you do any manipulation. And all I'm going to do is take this graph, I'm going to identify these points, the easy ones to work with, and I'm going to pick them up, and I'm going to move them the appropriate number of spaces to the left and then up. And I'll just do it point by point. So this first point, which is at 2 comma 2, I go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, and then 1, 2, 3 up. And it transforms to that point. Now some of you would just pick up the whole thing and move it, and that's good if you can do it. I'm doing this in a very conservative way, just point by point moving it over. Then I take this point, and it goes over 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3. And then this point, which is at 5, 3, it goes over 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3. Now actually, that point, uh, I'm off the scale a little bit, but that's OK. And then finally, the last one that's given, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3. So it takes you up there. And then all you got to do is connect those points. And the shape should not change. It is just moved over and up. So that's the method for those graphs. On an exam, you're more likely to be given, say, the original and then be asked which of the following represents this um, new graph. Then here we have y plus 3 is equal to f at x minus 2. And I will note that the f at x minus 2 is moving us over two units to the right. So I'm just indicating in really simple, bare bones way, 2 to the right. And then the y plus 3 is 3 down. Now, you may or may not decide to isolate the y. That is really your choice. And then do the same thing. And I'm going to do this one fairly rapidly because it's, we've gotten good at it. But uh, this point there, 2 comma 2, it moves over 2 and then 3 down. So we go 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3. And it transforms to this point. Then we take the next one. And that goes 2 over, and then 1, 2, 3. 
and then so on. Take this point, 2 over, and then 1, 2, 3, it takes you there. And I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm not, I'm not going to get, uh, I'm not going to um, draw the last one. Instead, I'll just connect these points. And again, the shape, and then actually extend it on. But the shape doesn't change, just its location. So you need to get good at those problems because you will see them on exams and they're a staple. Now the algebra questions, I'm calling these algebra questions, but I'm also going to look at a non-algebraic solution to them. These also are exam type questions. So we start off with what vertical translation is necessary to make y equal 2 to the x pass through 2 comma 5. Oops, I'm going to just bring up a screen in a second or two. Now, this is a vertical translation, and you're given one point. And the translation we're looking for could be found by going into this form. I'll take this y minus k is equal to 2 to the x. Now, the k can be taken to the other side as well. But the k value represents the vertical translation. And that's what we want to solve for. And we were given a point on the curve that satisfies that equation. That's 2 comma 5. And that's our x and our y. So I substitute in the y, which is 5. I leave the k open because that's what I'm going to be going after, and that's equal to 2 to the exponent of 2. And all you have to do now is solve for the k. And it would have been easier if it was on the other side had you written it as y is equal to 2 to the x plus k. So you recall that that's an, another version of that. So 5 minus k is equal to 4. And then subtract the 4 from both sides will give you 1 and I'm going to move the k over so I get k is equal to 1 and therefore the equation is y minus 1 is equal to 2 to the x and if you wanted to you could bring that 1 to the other side but in any event, this is one unit up. So by inspection, the curve, the original curve, would have to be moved up one unit to pass through 2 comma 5. And this is a reliable method. When you're looking for the vertical translations, you just go to the y minus k or y equal 2 to the x plus k form, solve for the k value by substituting in the given x, y. I am going to consider a graphical solution of this too, which is very effective if you know what you're doing. Although most people do approach it from the algebraic uh, perspective. So it can be solved graphically. So we start off just by looking at the graph y is equal to 2 to the x. So we have this exponential function. And we take a look at the point um, 2 comma 4. Now the reason I chose 2 comma 4 is I substitute in x equal 2 into y equal 2 to the x. So you get y is equal to 4, 2 squared. The reason I did that was I wanted to find out what point, what was, what was the corresponding point on the original curve before we translated it vertically. And if there's a vertical translation, it means the x-coordinate stays the same. So that's why I used x is equal to 2. So 2 comma 4 is right there. And we want to move this graph upwards 
so it passes through 2 comma 5 right there and again do not think too hard about it but ask yourself the question how far do I have to move the original graph vertically so that it passes through that point 2 comma 5 or if you like what vertical translation is required and by inspection one unit up. So if that makes sense to you, it's a good method. But the algebraic method always, always, always works. Now the next question is a horizontal question. Oops, that's actually based on this. I'll go on to the next. I did that. So what horizontal translation is required to make y equal square root of x pass through 1 comma 3? Now the way these work, because it's a horizontal translation, we know that it's going to be of form y is equal to the square root of x minus h because x minus h indicates a horizontal translation. So we solve for h. So we do know our x and our y. So y goes into be 3 and this becomes 1 minus h. And now we solve this equation. And to solve it, we have to square both sides. So 3 squared is equal to 1 minus h squared. So that would give us 9 is equal to 1 minus h. When we solve for h, we'll get 8 is equal to negative h. So therefore, h is equal to negative 8. And I'm going to take this answer, and I'm going to go back into the equation to try to make sense of it. A lot of you will look at it and tell, get the answer immediately. But um, our equation could therefore be expressed as y is equal to the square root of x minus negative 8. So that's y is equal to square root of x plus 8. And then you can see clearly that it's going to be 8 units to the left. The negative 8 tells us that actually because um, when you have it in the x minus h form um, the sign is going to indicate the actual direction for it. But I like to go back to find out what the equation is and then identify it. Now this can be done graphically. A little trickier because it's a horizontal translation. But here's the original graph, y is equal to square root of x. And the point 9 comma 3 lies on this graph. So you're wondering, well what's that about? Um, I keep the y-coordinate the same because with a horizontal translation the y-coordinate doesn't change. So I know that y is going to be 3 because that's um, the, original, the point that was in the question was 1 comma 3. So I replace y is th equal to 3 into this and then when I square both sides I'll get 9 is equal to x. So I go back to the graph and 9 comma 3 is about right there. And I want this one to go through 1 comma 3, which is right there. And just ask yourself, how far do I move it? And you can tell by inspection it's going to be 8 units to the left. So this method works, 
but it's, it re really requires you to be careful. You've got to be clear if it's horizontal or vertical and which point stays the same. Oops, take that back. And I will write this in by inspection. Eight units left. Let's do one more. Same sort of thing. What horizontal translation is required to make f at x equal 1 over x plus 1 pass through negative 4, negative 1? Now, I'm going to do this one el only algebraically. I'm not going to bother with the graphical one. And the, it always works, of course, algebraically. So most people prefer that. So I'll bring up a new screen, and I'll note that here's my x and my y. And I'm going to insert the h value. So we know that this is going to be f at x is equal to 1, and we replace the x with x minus h plus 1. And then all you got to do is replace in your y value. Replace your x value in, which is negative 4 and then your plus 1. So negative 1 is equal to 1 over negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3 minus h. And then do a little bit of algebra on this one. I like to cross multiply or you could multiply both sides by negative 3 minus h. But the cross multiplication would take you to this. Negative 1 times negative 3 minus h is equal to 1. So keep in mind that this actually is over 1. Any number can be written over 1. And then you can see the cross multiplication fairly well. So this becomes 3 plus h is equal to 1. And when you solve, you'll get h. Subtract the 3 away. h is equal to... Um, negative 2. And I'll bring up a new screen right away and I'll summarize this, but you might be able to tell already that that h equal negative 2 tells me that it's been moved to the left, negative 2, or to the 2. So the equation is f at x is equal to 1 over x minus negative 2 plus 1. And this can be a little confusing because you have that number around already, but don't let it confuse you. Just write it as x plus 2 plus 1. We don't care about that plus 1. It had no effect on anything. But we do care x plus 2 means 2 units to the left. So those are good questions, good practice. And that's it for me on these. So thank you for your time.